Hello. I've been doing pretty good about coming in and saying hello every day. Well, I call it pretty good because I think it's pretty good. But I just wanted to say hello, see how y'all are doing. But I, and I want to show you that I finished my pumpkin, my um. I finished my warty pumpkin by putting all its little warts on there. And I think that's enough. I could even go with more warts, but I finished it up with just scraps of the wool. Where the wool applique, this is sort of like applique on to the wool, onto the wool. And um, it is just amazing what I'm learning about wool applique is the wool does not fray. Now everybody, every bit of this is raw edge. You don't have to turn anything under. It's just so beautiful to work with. And, um, and I found out that wool is, is just different these days than it was years ago. I guess years ago it was just itch, itch, itch. If you had a wool sweater that grandma made you, you had to wear it even if it itched because grandma made it for you. But it wool does not itch like it did before. Some people are still allergic to wool, but then some people are allergic to anything. Oh, thank you, Papa. Oh, I must have ordered something. Oh, no, I didn't. That's from Jane. Jane sent me something. Okay, I'll have to look at that in a minute. Okay, thank you, Papa. And anyway, so wool applique is just nothing like, well, of course, it's something like regular applique where you got to turn the edges under and stuff. This you never have to turn the edges underneath under it. Well, then I made another pumpkin. I made this pumpkin. I made it out of, it's like a green plaid. The, the fabric is like, the color is like a plaid, and I just think that made the most beautiful pumpkin. And so, but I want to applique onto it another little pumpkin. So I, um, I want a pumpkin on a pumpkin. And so I put, I've got two layers of wool here, and then I have two layers here for the, for the, um, that thing, the stem. And now, you know, I heard somebody say that they use a stapler rather than a pin or, or to use a pin or some heat and bond or something, just a stapler. Well, I don't have a stapler right here. I have a stapler, but it's not right here. But that would be a good idea to just put a staple right in there and that would hold it all together. But I'm going to just hold it with my thumb and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first just go around with a little whip stitch. I'm using what this thread is that I'm using is just a very inexpensive, um, what they sell for friendship bracelets, you know, that kind of thread. And, um, Oh, okay. Um, and so I'm just going to do a whip stitch around this pumpkin. And I'm whipping over both of the layers, the two colors. And I'm just doing this all in the fall colors, which actually in most groupings of wool that you can order, it's mostly all in the primitive and the um, fall colors to begin with. You can get all colors, but most of the groupings are, are fall colors. And it's so nice that you can use um, your scraps, your scraps just because it doesn't fray because it doesn't fray, I mean, if it's a real light, real 
loose weave, then it it will fray a little bit, but even then it doesn't hardly fray at all. I could be stitching this on right here with um, with a loose weaved wool and it still wouldn't be fraying much. I mean, it might fray a little, but especially then if it's been wool felted, if it's been felted, um, I'm still learning about how to find out if it's been felted or not and um and then somebody told me in the comments that if you hold it up to the light and you can see through it see light through it then it's not been felted but if you can if you cannot see light through it then it's been felted so that makes sense too because felted wool is felted is um is shrunk it's put together and then it's shrunk in, in hot water and soap and that's what sh what um what then actually shrinks it and felts it and so and like my friend jerry um jerry bellini she she goes to the thrift stores because uh, wool is expensive you just it's just expensive and um i mean compared to compared to um buying you know just cotton fabric or any any other fabrics wool is just probably at the top of the line expensive because it has to be you know starts with shearing the sheep first you got to raise the sheep and feed them and love them and then give them a nice haircut and then you do work with the wool from the sheep it and it just go and it has to be spun and it, i mean there's a lot of steps to making that yeah, come up with your felted wool and so but jerry goes to the thrift shops and she finds um she finds sweaters or things that are made from wool and um and she shrinks it herself and then cuts the garment apart and um, makes her pieces. Where did I get that in there? How did, how, how did that happen? Okay. And um, so that's another process to make your wool, to get your wool. And, um, but since I started working with this wool, it just absolutely, I am amazed how, how it works. It's just in a whole class by itself. And we're back in the day, back in the day, whenever the day was, there was a lot of wool used. And, um, and I don't think wool is used as much anymore. I mean, it's still used, of course. You can still buy them old woolen underwear. But, um, but yes, this, it, um, wool is just beautiful. And so, see, now I'm almost all the way around. And, um, okay, then I still want to go up here to the stem, go around the stem just put in the whip stitch and the whip stitch is all you need you do not need to get any kind of fancy now of course you can get fancy if you're the fancy kind of person but i'm not a fancy kind of person so i don't need to use any fancy stitches although you know since i'm just at the beginning of this experience with wool um I might do some fancy stitches sometime in life, but right now I'm just doing a whip stitch and and this is just a little running stitch that I did the spines up the pumpkin. And so and I and I think also using I like my threads to show really I've always liked my threads to show 
on most anything that I'm doing. I don't try to hide my thread. I try to incorporate the thread as part of the of the piece and of the beauty. And so, and I'm just using, I've got just a drawer full of um, different threads that um, embroidery flosses and I don't have any of the expensive stuff. I've just got just the just the flosses and then I've got this too these kind of threads which are probably what do they call these though this is DMC number eight cotton pearl and so these are good and these the weight of these is probably about two equal to about two strands of embroidery floss together two or three that one is anyway okay and then I want to go with now I've got it stitched all the way around so now I want to take my running stitch and when I do the shape of the pumpkin lines I I always start with just a um, running stitch down the center of it see I put a straight stitch down the center first like on this one and then on this one too just a straight stitch down the center and and I if I do that and I just do a running stitch with just a little bit of a gap in between each step it each stitch not much and so and I'm not getting this real straight I don't get anything real straight but my my handmade items you can tell they're handmade because nothing's straight and right now I'm holding this out from me usually I'm right up here in my lap when I'm stitching well not with this because I have the camera on there because I'm sharing with you and hanging out with you guys. I like hanging out with you guys, you know. Okay, so let's see. And then now I'll go to the side of that one side, but now I'm going to curve it. Curve my line of stitching. See, the first one was straight, and then I go out a little curve and a little curve all the way till I have enough stitches to make it look like it's really a pumpkin. Kind of looks like it's a shape of an apple before I get. But I could put an apple on here too. You just never know. And just applique, and I'm telling you, just the simplest applique here. And, um, which applique I've always in my lifetime thought it was really so now I'll go just a little bit over and I just need one more row on that side to get this into the pumpkin shape pumpkin so it looks like a pumpkin sort of like a pumpkin and actually if you ever go to the pumpkin field to pick you out a pumpkin for Halloween or Thanksgiving or just for fall decoration or whatever you use them for um, you will find that there are so many different shapes of pumpkins so you don't have to be looking for for the perfectly perfect pumpkin because they're all perfect in whatever shape they are so now I'm going on the other side of that straight line and might have enough thread right on this here needle without having to re-thread and I'm going quite quickly like I say not in my lap so it's I could probably get it a little bit more in form if I usually have right there in my lap but I have just found that I and I'm watching different um, different 
creators that work differently with their with their um, with their wool and um, so then I'm, I'm getting little tidbits of information from each one and I'm trying to with this last little bit of thread on here. Oh, it pulled out of the needle again. I'm just trying to use the very, very end of this thread and um, get that back in that eye of the needle. I've only got a few when I went digging through my needles so that I could find, because I like to now I like to keep a few needles um, already threaded. You can't see them, but um, and then just in my pin cushion there. But there now I just put put that um, embroidered that pumpkin onto this pumpkin. And I think that is cute. Oh, and the way I did this top when I just did this a little bit differently, I stitched around the stem and then stitched the stem on. But on the end of the stem, I just kind of cut little, cut, I cut the end of the stem with just a little bit of, um, just oh, to make it look almost like a tassel-y kind of thing. And, um, and that, that, and, and when you cut it like that, it's just going to stay like that. It's not going to um, just fray apart. So I like that too. So then there's that pumpkin. Here's this pumpkin. They're both going to go in my... I can't only just put pumpkin pumpkins in my fall journal, but that these are going to go in my fall journal. And so... And I've done a lot of these um, wool pennies, woolen pennies, and I've got, the more I do, the more um, fancy I get on them. And then I just hand cut my circles, so they, they're they just turning out to be different sizes, just hand cutting them. And this one here, this one here I went I put some French knots around too but I also just went around with some little stitches you can see around the back where I just were over each one of the threads that I whip stitched on then I put just a little and so it just puts a little stitch and a little pop of color there and so and so I got a few of them that I did with uh, putting in the um I like this one's got one two three four five layers of color and then the back layer is six but um and this one here is I use this type of thread to um do the the stitching around the the whip stitch to make it look like a wagon wheel and so and, and these ones are a little bit more plain because I don't have any, but I could still go on this one and, and, and that might be what I'll do. I might, I just keep them laying here. I don't want to put them away because I want to keep looking at them. And look at all the color in that one, just so much color. And so I'm going to have some of my um, woolen buttons or whatever you call them, my wagon wheel buttons for each one of my journals because I'm going to do all the four seasons and so but now this one here might go in a fall actually I should have maybe put the the um, button in the middle and maybe the French knots and maybe an orange and it would be more fall but this one's pretty fallish right here and so but I haven't really paid much attention to the colors I just pick a color out of my wool bin and um, put them together and like this one here would be summery that could go in my summer journal 
in like a Christmas like this one would maybe almost go in my Christmas journal with the red and white and green and blue that this would probably almost go in in my Christmas journal so but what I'm going to be doing though like I said the other day I'm going to get like a tin or something that when I make something that I intend for a particular journal I'll just put it in its tin its container that will be labeled for each each um, each season and so but right now I just love this pile I love my pile getting bigger and so and I'll just stitch up and stitch up I just keep stitching okay for now that's what I wanted to show you I wanted I just want you to know how easy it is oh and wool is so soft a string hanging back there I have to fix that um, how easy how simple how and how comforting it is to wool, work with wool and so that was my today's hello now but Papa just brought me in this mail that it came from Janie Janie Renteria I'm going to trucker Janie most people know her by trucker Janie in this pretty pink envelope and so I'm going to just see what's in here because I need to know I can't believe it sat there for 10 minutes without me opening it we were excited yesterday my son wanted a wheelbarrow so without without telling him I ordered him a really nice wheelbarrow and um, so yesterday he got it yesterday and put it together and the kids just love it oh my gosh what is in here oh Janie look at this <gasps> did she make these I wonder I know you can buy kits oh my she did make this look at this she made this out of resin oh look at that you can see down deep into those colors I mean you can see into it so she must well I don't know how she does this I don't know how she did this to make that so beautiful that is beautiful and she put it on into a key ring I could take that key ring off since I don't use keys for anything anymore and put that in as a necklace or I could put it on my purse as a purse charm oh my, not that i even go anywhere with my purse anymore but my purse is always hanging there so that is beautiful and look at the purples in there oh my gosh that's beautiful now i don't know if she made this but knowing janie she probably did oh and look at this i know you can buy kits to make pens like this and um oh there's is this an extra refill or is that do i have to put that in look at that and with my purple ladybug and let's see oh yeah it's got a refill in there it's got a pen ink in there oh look how nice oh how nice it just feels to hold And it writes nice hello friends and this is my new favorite thing my new favorite pen oh uh, and she's double-sided oh that is beautiful and then you twist it to pull the the lead the ink back in okay I'm gonna put this back into this and put that on my bulletin board so I don't lose 
that spare pen. Oh, this is gorgeous. This is just gorgeous. For you all, I have worked a little bit with resin, but just a little bit. Lately, lately me and Aria have been playing with the resin. I don't think I showed you what I did. I'll show you what I did with the resin. What we did, me and her did that, just a second. It was her idea. Wait, I gotta get myself stood up. Oh, got these legs. Okay, this here, this here is a bug. We have the cicadas outside. Oh, and I love the cicada sound. There can be two cicadas up in the trees, and when they start their music, it sounds like there's thousands of them. And there can be just two, you know. Yeah, but um, then somehow they, they, they shed their shell. I have to learn the different, I got to study on cicadas, how they do that. And well, we find, she goes out there and finds the shells, the echoskeleton, I guess she called it. And so what we did then was just setting them down and pouring the, the, um, the um, resin over it a few times and that's what we come up with because it was pouring over and then pouring off and so it made like the stand there for it but I uh, see now I can have they're very when you first find them they're very um, delicate and you can break them if you squish them too much and like every one of ours we did three of them and everyone is missing one leg and so we, we need to find one that's got all of its legs on there and then do it again. Not that I'm crazy about bugs, but one of them we're going to give to our friend Tori, Tori because Tori loves bugs. She's just into bugs, and she's actually got a cicada, cicada tattooed to her thigh. And, it's, and that thing must be about six inches long, her tattoo. But so she's going to get this one. Or if we find another shell, it might. Because they only come like once a year that you can hear them. And so, but I thought that was pretty cool. And that's done with the, with the resin. There's so much you can do with the resin. I buy the one-part resin. Some people buy the two-part resin. But I, we've only played around with the one-part resin. And... I think it just worked. Just you can can you see the like the layers in there? I don't know it what doesn't want to focus where you can see. But you can really see looking in the side I mean because there's clear resin and then inside there's colored resin. That's beautiful stuff. Oh my gosh. Okay, well now I'm going to, again, we're going to pull a card to read. And, but I just, I'm, probably a lot of my videos in the future, for future, for now, will be having to do with what I'm doing with my um, four journals that I'm going to make and it's going to be six by six journals so I'm going to make sure that what I make to go in my journals my textile journals will be able to fit in oh, excuse me in to fit those pages and so I'm going to get that start those the actual journals are going to start soon but I'm loving this. I'm loving this. And like I said, I learned about the warty pumpkins from Possum Patty. And she she did an art project in her paper journal use, making uh, uh, warty pumpkins. And they were so cute. And I just love these. These now have texture in them because... I. I stitched on those scraps of wool and then I've got like three or four colors of um, of the embroidery floss that I made some some 
um, French knots and that gives it nice texture and so I don't know maybe I need to just do one little grouping of of um, some warties on this one too I don't know we'll see what I do okay our message today from ancestors let me put my glasses on is you see did I comb my hair okay that's close enough right there wait a minute here put my head on there now got my warty hat on now I'm beautiful okay on earth humans learn about life by telling stories and creating new ones based on shared experiences I love stories from way back then eventually after repeating one often enough it becomes your main story that you use to define yourself define yourself and the world so you get the answers you see and to get the answers you seek, you must get vulnerable and hear your own story when you tell it. Ask, why do you tell it? It is, is it really true? What else can be true? Can you see the truth that spirit is in all of our things? Do you see how other stories overlap and intertwine? Spirit loves stories, for they are like blueprints for co-creation co-creation so tell the one we know to be true about you a story of courage gratitude and honesty tell an empowered story about well-being wisdom and grace you will experience your world according to the story you tell about it to make sure there are stories that you are proud of and so Um, just that last sentence in there, stories that you are proud of. You know, sometimes there are stories that you're not real proud of, but they are a learning experience. And when you do share them, it can be a learning experience for others. So you can take that two ways. But here they were talking mainly about stories that do include courage gratitude and honesty because we do want that in our lives and so and i i think as any of you that are 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 getting older in age you're just getting up there in age um we do tell stories we do tell we do tell stories um and true stories. I mean, maybe I embellish mine a little bit too much. <laughs> but um, you see that man standing there behind me? A, sta a man standing behind me. He sure is a handsome little one, is he? Look, see how he's growing his mustache? He looks like Albert Einstein. Yeah, I want him to grow his beard too, but he doesn't want that, so... No. I go ahead and let him shave his beard, but I tell him, leave your mustache going. And then that hair, I told him it looks like Willie Nelson. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, and that's what I have to say for you today. And that's our share of the day. I want to do a little share every day, even if it's wrong. It's not wrong. But I am just so loving this wool. And... I mean, if you have, I mean, just, it's just so, so comforting. For one thing, it's so soft. It's so soft. It's so easy to sew through. And I may still add a little bit to this here pumpkin, but this might be finished. I don't know. Maybe I'll go like this and say cheese. That's what my friend who I watch, hey everybody, she always does a thumbnail. She says, I got to get something for a thumbnail. And then she, she figures out, but I don't know how to do that. I can go like this and say cheese. I can go like this, cheese. But getting the thumbnail out of there 
then I don't know how to put it on. My one friend has sent me pictures, taken a thumbnail out of a film to me and sent it to me. And um, I think that was Bernice that done that. And um, but then I and so then I've got the image, but I don't know how to put it in my. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I just have to save it to my phone. Hey, save it to my computer, and then import it in. Maybe I can. I don't know. All right. Well, anyway. Cheese. Okay. These are beautiful. Oops. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to let you go now. But first, I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. Keep you safe and secure. And keep you, um, give you a lot of serenity. And keep you healthy and happy and humble. And always remember, no matter how life gets, stay one more day. Is tomorrow things will change it's a whole beginning of a new life okay and now we need our mouse we need, and it's oh here it is i covered it up with the pink envelope god bless and keep you and i'll see you tomorrow hopefully if the creek don't rise <laughs>